Hope you're doing good. Micah back with another video. Back here to talk about the Samsung Galaxy Watch Ultra one month later. A device that really caught my attention. A device that also surprised me and also shocked me from the perspective of you guys really enjoying the Galaxy Watch Ultra and the content I've been able to bring to the channel. Yes, I love the box because it's very simplistic yet classy. And then of course you have the watch right here. And I'm rocking this beautiful kind of mesh-like band, if you guys can see that there. If we turn that watch face on, bada boom, bada bang. So what a what 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 a, a, a genuine piece of hardware that Samsung has made for us consumers to actually rock. And it really is in direct competition to Apple's Apple Watch Ultra. It's kind of funny when you think about the, the naming schemes and who took what from what because you read the comment section on my videos and others you will see a lot of people debate who took what from who and when you think about it Samsung has always had the more gear sport like run. They've had the Galaxy S3 Frontier. They've had this shape for a little bit longer than Apple and Samsung technically started the Ultra line first with their phones, but Samsung took the Pro moniker from Apple with the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. And so Apple basically just decided to <laughs> retaliate with the Apple Watch Ultra, which then made it a little unfortunate for Samsung to name their Samsung Galaxy Watch an Ultra model. So when you consider that, when it, when it comes to the naming and, and whatnot, Samsung was really here first from that perspective. And if you want to go even further back, I mean, you got like Sony with the smartwatches, right? I actually had one of the first generation models, Sony smartwatches back in like 2012, 2013. So it, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who took from what, competition needs to breed competition and to provide us with the most value. If you want us to spend money, especially $650 for this one or $800 for the Apple Watch Ultra. What do these watches really bring to the table? And in the Samsung Galaxy Watch Ultra's case, it actually does a very good job of providing a good level of features and wearability, if you will, for that price point. Now, is that first price point still high? Yes, it is. But let's see what you get. From a hardware perspective, you get a very solid watch. It's got some heft to it it is an ultra model it's supposed to be rugged it's made out of titanium this titanium gray model has the orange accents on it and i think for me personally that's one of the things that's kind of taken me out of wearing the watch or wearing certain watch faces on it because it's not like a neutral type watch so it can be hard for me to really style different watch faces because I, I just all that orange is in my face so i just end up end up really styling a lot of my watch faces based off of the orange that that they accented with this titanium gray color now there's two other colorways that are pretty nice i think it's titanium silver which looks like the samsung galaxy watch it very very uh nostalgic from that perspective and then you also have the titanium white which has been cleaning our house i mean it's been uh, uh, sold out it's been on back order it's hard for people to get that model because that to me is truthfully the best looking galaxy watch ultra i just wanted something different because for me personally now having an apple watch ultra by accident i already have that silver colorway that silver titanium look and i wear classic time pieces so i already have a lot of polished silver cases so i didn't need another one with my galaxy watch ultra i wanted something to stand out a little bit and that's where this really comes in right for me and the orange accenting it's fine from that perspective because i do have other watches i can wear if this one isn't fitting the personal feng shui so from a hardware perspective you can definitely say that samsung did their thing kind of keeping their kind of quote unquote look while still adding a new and different flavor with the Galaxy Watch Ultra. I am in the camp that this is not a ripoff from Apple's Apple Watch Ultra. It's not rectangular shape. It still maintains the circle. It's more of a squircle now, but it still maintains the 47 millimeter OLED in the middle, 480 by 480 for those on the pixel peeps. And it still has that Samsung touch. The action button is not the same as Apple Watch's uh, action button or you know whatever you want to call it. Samsung's quick button is different. They, they kept all the buttons on one side. So there is definitely Samsung here still with the Galaxy Watch Ultra. And who's to say that they wouldn't finally try to make a watch that looked 
even vaguely similar to Apple Watch Ultra. When you think about Samsung's design scheme and how they keep it fresh, don't you think that it was going to be a matter of time before they finally even made something even remotely close to an Apple Watch Ultra? I think we have too much, I think there's too much sensitivity from that perspective. As soon as something happens, people forget history and forget the fact that Samsung was really the first in comparison to the Apple Watch when it came to the smartwatch game and the way they are unique with their yearly designs. And so for that reason, I can definitely say that I do like what this looks like. I go back and forth wearing this over my Apple Watch Ultra because I wasn't, again, expecting to get the Apple Watch Ultra. Shout out to moms. But I like wearing this watch. Despite the orange, and it, I find I found a way to accept that the orange is really just a popish accent color that really stands out on the wrist. And pairing it with a nice black mesh style loop band, which is really more metal than anything. But again, fire. I have found this to be very enjoyable to watch, uh, to, to, to watch and to wear <laughs> on a daily basis. The problem I do have from a hardware perspective is the actual connectors. I don't have nails. Uh, you guys could probably even see. I don't really have nails like that. So unfortunately, it's hard for me to press the little uh, release button to engage it to pull this out. I've been able to do it with some watches or some, some watch band connectors, but I think they made it a little too technical or a little too mechanical to, to release the watch bands. That's why I actually prefer Apple's over Samsung's just because of that alone. Apple has made it easy to just push up and it slides out. This one you have to push up and yank with dear life to pull the watch band out of the connector. Now, on the plus side, that means it's very secure and it's not going to just release on you. And I've never had no problems with Apple's either. And you're going to hear a lot of comparisons with the Apple stuff. But I don't like the fact that I just simply can't disengage the watch band from the watch without having to get my wife's fingers to do it because <laughs> she has nails she can actually do it more successfully. But even her, she will have a, a, a difficult time sometimes as well. And I think maybe it's just my model, but it, it, it definitely isn't adding to the fun of wanting to swap out watch bands, especially when you have quite a few watch bands that you'd like to put on and rock and wear. To finalize my thoughts on the hardware, please improve the connector for the Galaxy Watch Ultra 2. For a first attempt, in hardware, I think this is beautiful. I definitely hope that the second generation brings back the rotating bezel because that is very unique and Samsung signature. So I hope they bring that back, readjust the band connector, and really just maintain what they have otherwise. I think a lot of this is really good. Bring more classic uh, watch faces because software is where you're gonna find a lot of that good opportunity, if you will, from Samsung. The watch faces. We got to talk about the watch faces for this. And the reason why it's easy to talk about watch faces is because that's all we really deal with when it comes to these watches is where are the watch faces at, right? Now, in Samsung defense, and if you, as you've seen with coverage on the channel, you've seen I have been doing a lot of watch face video. Well, I've really only done like two. I have a third one coming up for some paid watch faces. But Samsung's Stock watch faces are actually good. You just have to look for them. And that's where I come in handy for you guys, dropping those videos on how to customize Samsung's watch faces and how to actually find them because you'd be surprised how they're right in your face and you would never know unless you actually gave that watch face a chance. And when you dial it in, pun intended, you will see how much more beautiful Samsung's attempts at watch faces really are. I just think they made some bad calls when it comes to not allowing the chronograph complication in a lot of their watch faces. You have a lot of classic time fa uh, t uh, watch faces or dials. Why not use the chronograph as a complication for most of them? It's only available on one watch face. And that's very, very unfortunate, which is a premium analog, I believe. I think that's the only one that the chronograph complication is available on. Please make that more universal, more ubiquitous across their other, uh, 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 across your other watch faces. Because someone like me and other people who may rock, rock this more as a watch than a fitness tracker will definitely enjoy using those complications more than a lot of the fitness tracking complications. And that's where the quick button 
really also eliminates a lot of those complications. The quick button allows you to either jump right into a workout or jump to your workout. So unless and you are somebody that is a, triath a triathlete, uh, a multiple sport person, even with multi-sport, you have that capability, if not with the quick button, with your widgets. If you, all you gotta do is swipe over once or twice and you will get to multi-sport. I might be able to even show you guys right here. You swipe, you swipe, you swipe, you swipe, right there, multi-sport. You see that? So it's even just a couple swipes away and you can rearrange your widgets how you, how you would like. So do I need to have complications for workouts on the Galaxy Watch Ultra when you've given me the option with the quick button and with a widget? Do I need all these exercise options for complications? And so that's why I'm spending quite a, a little bit of time on the whole watch face situation because I definitely think that they could do a much better job of improving their more classy time uh, piece watch dials or watch faces and add those type of complications and spend more time allowing us to be able to access exercise with our buttons with the widgets as well and so that's something i actually appreciate about this the galaxy watch ultra and samsung's health platform is that they're a little bit more reasonable even within samsung health it's easy to count calories and you can do it on the watch as well it's just a lot easier to do it on the phone but in terms of Samsung Health, I definitely like this. I like how it counts sleep. They both, they, they count sleep relatively similar. Most, you're gonna find subtle differences here and there. I know sometimes for me personally, it felt like I didn't sleep that long, but then, you know, it shows that I was actually asleep for seven hours. I would beg the difference. In some cases, I felt like I was probably only asleep for five, but sometimes when you toss an attorney, you don't realize you might just be sleep. It's just light sleep. And that is something um, that most watches do a pretty decent job of is counting how long you were probably more or less lightly sleeping. And so again, accuracy from that perspective has been pretty good with the Galaxy Watch Ultra. In terms of overall performance and daily use, using the watch itself, scrolling, dealing with it has been phenomenal. I haven't had no issues from that perspective. I, I actually like it. I remember there was a scare when, it, when Samsung first showed this off and all the you know bigger creators at the event was showing that it seemed very laggy so it did kind of throw us off a little bit but having it in house haven't noticed any lag when using it the only time it looks like it lagged is when you start an exercise and it counts down and it looks like there's lag in the animation but i think that's just the animation is supposed to look a little bit more sporty a little bit more uh choppy if you will i don't think it's actually lag but again, like I said, I haven't noticed any of that. The only thing I've noticed from a software perspective, and this is with every Samsung Galaxy watch, is when changing wallpapers or watch faces or trying to customize, it's hard for it to load on the phone. So in the wearable app, the wearable app has problems. On here, no, I can press and hold, edit, keep going, but if I try to do it within the wearable app, and try to customize the watch face, it can hang. So that's very frustrating, and I hope that Samsung will tweak that with the Galaxy Wearable app, because I think I may have maybe experienced that once or twice in the time I've used an Apple Watch SE, and I have not experienced that with the Apple Watch Ultra. The only thing I've experienced with the Apple Watch Ultra is like sometimes it won't load the weather and or temperature climate-based information while editing the app, but once you finish editing the app or the watch face, then it will populate on the watch itself. So I've noticed that weird disconnect there, but nothing like the hanging in the Galaxy wearable app. And I, and yes, shout out to those who have recommended, because that's something you do. You go then tap the watch, play around with the watch to see if it'll re-engage with the phone and the wearable app. That doesn't help all the time. It's just Samsung needs to improve and optimize the wearable app and its connectivity with its wearables. Now, battery life. <laughs> battery life baby you guys have seen on the channel i was able to get as high as three days and 11 hours on here and that's cutting a lot of stuff off so for a time period i was not using i was on manual heart rate monitoring and manual stress monitoring and then also had google assistant you know disabled or wasn't active yet on the watch so once i did those two things i lost like 12 hours uh like legit I lost about 12 hours. So I went from three days, 11 hours to two days and 21 hours. So I was like, oh boy, okay. Can I live with that? 
So then I disable Google Assistant because reasonably I don't use it like that. And I actually don't like the speakers as much when Google Assistant talks. So that's a late hardware point, but please improve the speakers on the on the next model, uh, Samsung, because that that was a that was very strange to hear and see that this nice beefy watch has some weird speaker problems. But I don't like the way Google Assistant sounded coming out of these speakers. And no, it was not wet and nothing like that. I actually have not done nothing like that because I don't have a proper silicone band that I want to wear. And shout out to the Marine band, but I'm I'm good on it. It's way too uh, wieldy. For me to be wearing on my wrist so that's why i got rid of it or i don't wear it i have it i don't i don't wear it but yes once i started to tweak that so i went and re-disabled google assistant and i think i switched stress to continuous and then i switched my heart rate monitoring to every 10 minutes while still and i basically still hover around two days and 20 hours to like three days and two hours so I gained a couple hours back, but it just shows you that how like you should be able to still get two days out of this. Just be reasonable with a lot of the functionality that you're going to take advantage of. I have battery tips and tricks, tricks videos on the channel. If you guys haven't already checked that out, so go ahead and do that. But it's, it's constantly kind of playing around with things that you do and don't use and accepting that you don't use it and then cutting it off because you don't use it. So, and I, I know it's like, oh, I want everything on on my device and but you also have to have the mentality of if I'm going to have everything on my watch, I can't complain about battery life. Yes, we all would love our stuff to last a whole lot longer, but we also got to be realistic with what we're wearing, or what we're using and the size of it. Like it can't pack that big of a battery and we're not far enough into battery technology yet or advanced enough to be able to achieve all that time with a watch that's as sophisticated as something like the galaxy watch ultra so again it's just about being reasonable if you don't use the feature it doesn't matter about it being on or not uh, or just cut it off because you don't use it that's where being reasonable comes in just cut it off don't deal with it and then you get more battery life you'll start to notice you can improve your battery life by just accepting you you don't use something and if you decide to just go and cut it back on and use it in terms of fitness tracking i think it tracks you know ultimately steps pretty well sleep pretty well and i have not noticed that take a real hit on the battery life even sleeping i was i'm still able i was still able to get three days and some change even with sleep tracking right so that was before i had the, all the other stuff manually on and stuff like that of course when you sleep it will then maybe do a little bit more of that tracking but it's only in that period of you being sleep so that's something i also like and notice how smart this really is and so i'm just looking forward to what the galaxy watch ultra 2 is going to be and to compare it against this model because for a first gen model yes you know they weren't that far behind but it does do a good job of snore detection and blood oxygen and all that type of stuff but i can definitely say without a shadow of a doubt i can recommend this watch if you are into samsung products you have a lot of samsung products and you want to try something new i can recommend the samsung galaxy watch ultra now if you're not like that you don't play ball like that in samsung's ecosystem you don't really wear a lot of smart watches like that or you don't know if you really want to take a chance on this yet then that's why i would say hold off and that's simply because of the price point it's 650 dollars I don't think you have to spend that much money. Now, if you're a watch person or a watch connoisseur, you love timepieces and you you don't you're not you don't discriminate against smart watches, grab you one for sure, right? But I think this is like right in the middle of grab it if you're confident, don't grab it if you're not confident. And I think that's where my recommendation stands because of that price point of $650. If this is a Galaxy Watch 7, I would recommend you that if you were unsure. Rock the Galaxy Watch 7, see how you feel about that. And then when the Galaxy Watch Ultra 2 drops, then most likely check the channel back if you're not already subscribed <laughs> and then see the thoughts on the Galaxy Watch Ultra 2 because I'm feeling confident that that model is the one that's going to be easily referable and recommendable to the general audience. But those are my thoughts. Let me know down in the comment section below what you guys think about Samsung, what you guys think about their products. But the comment section is open for discussion. If you guys haven't already, make sure to ignite the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. It's all free. That was the video. So you and I can sit back, check, see what's cracking. And don't forget to hit that super thanks button down there by the like and dislike button, cash app and PayPal, and check the channel out for all the videos available to you. That's where to keep tech fresh and alive.
on this channel. It's the Red Micah signing out. Until the next video. Wait for it.